global markets. Hans Goethe of LJT Bank uh, joins in to talk about all of that. Hans, morning. Thanks for joining in. Do you think it's regular profit taking across global markets uh, across Asia today or is the swine flu affecting sentiment at all? Uh, it could be the swine flu, actually. I mean, all of us lived through SARS in 2003, especially here in Singapore. We have uh, not very fond memories of it, and we see how actually how serious this can be and how fast these, uh, these diseases can travel around the world. So I think there's a bit of anxiety regarding uh, the swine flu here. Hans, morning. What about the market, though? Six weeks of a pretty sharp run and fantastic flows to go with it. Are you sensing that there's a lot of money waiting to come into markets, especially this whole Asian basket? Well, over the last six weeks, we have seen a very strong rally, which started in the U.S., and Asian markets are still taking the lead from the United States. Uh, you have to remember that in March, we were at extremely oversold levels. Sentiment was at rock bottom. And what we're seeing here is what we would label as a bear market rally, which admittedly has some further to go. We would not be surprised to see the Dow, for instance, in the United States be at maybe 9,500 by the middle of the year or something like that. And of course, this will have uh, a positive spillover into Asian markets as well. It's worth noting that Asian markets have not gone below the October low, so they have actually held up better than the developed markets, and I think that's, that's worth noting. And as long as this bear market rally persists, we think that Asian markets will outperform. Mm. So you're stopping short of calling this the end of the bear market yet, or the resumption of, or how, in however small a way, a resumption of a bull trend? Well, see what the market is discounting now are probably better fourth quarter 2009 comparisons as compared to the fourth quarter of 2008. We had a huge inventory drawdown and of course you will have, you'll probably see a pickup in production towards the end of the year. So you will have positive surprises in terms of GDP growth. However, the reason why we're not thinking that this is a new bull market basically has to do with the fundamentals surrounding the banks. It is pretty clear that the banks will have to raise more capital, probably to the hundreds of uh, billions of dollars. And the other thing, of course, is the fear of increasing deficits. Uh, we're talking about 1.8 trillion in the United States. Next year, probably another 2 trillion. And at some point, you have to ask yourself, where is this money coming from? The Chinese, the Japanese, the Koreans are no longer willing to buy it. So it probably would have to come from the Fed, which just prints new money. And that's not good for confidence. What do you think will be the final outcome in terms of information on this stress test analysis, Hans? I mean, the rumors put out some very grim pictures, but what uh, the government had to say on Friday was very sketchy. Well, you know, it, I'm wondering why they're doing this exercise at all, because there's actually nothing to gain from it. Uh, I do not expect <coughs> too much bad news, because I think they cannot afford to have bad news. There will be maybe one or two banks that have to raise more capital, it will probably be done by uh, converting uh, debt into equity. But the situation looks dire, and uh, when Treasury Secretary Geithner said that the majority of banks have plenty of capital, I think a lot of people interpreted this that as, he, as if he was talking about the 19 banks subject to the stress test. But you have to remember that there are 6,000 banks in the United States which are in relatively good shape. If he was talking about those, fine, but uh, he cannot have been talking about the 19 that are on the stress test list here. What about India? I mean, we've got a very important event coming up in the next few weeks in the election of the results. How important would that be in determining India market performance in your eyes? Uh, the election in India, unless it produces a very negative uh, surprise, which we don't expect, by the way, then it could be a market mover, but uh, we expect a coalition government either led by Congress or by the BJP and that would be probably pretty much what the market is expecting so that that's not that's not a big worry for us and if you look at the Indian market from a technical perspective it sits now smack at the 200 day moving average seems to be stalling there a little bit but we think it has an upside potential to about 12,700 on the Sensex that's on a technical basis What's your own instinct about how the second half of this year might shape up, Hans? Because the expectation was first half tough, second half strong. That, that's turned on its head a little bit. Well, when you're talking about economics, uh, the worst probably of the recession, I'm not saying it's over, but let's say the free fall phase of the market, of the economy is over. Uh, we're still seeing a deterioration throughout the year, but at a slower pace. 
So the recovery will probably take uh, hold in 2010, but it will be a very shallow recovery. We're not, we're not expecting a V-shape. It's more like an L-shape. And that will take time because now you have the bailouts, uh, the deficits and everything that will be a drag on, on economies worldwide. And uh, we're afraid that we're going to live with that for, for a number of years. Good speaking with you, Hans. Thanks for stopping by this morning. That's some uh, global opinion on markets. Let's take a break on that note. Still